I turned 30 something and uh, I wanted a job or a boyfriend and I didn't get either. So I moved. <laughs> Definitely, like my godmother changed her name from Jane to Catherine. It was the same kind of like lateral move. <laughs> Please, neighborhoods in Brooklyn. But, uh, it's my new apartment, and uh, the shower wasn't working, so I tried to take a bath. It's a long story, but I burned the shit out of my leg. And I really don't know how to explain how painful burns are. I guess if you're a woman, it would be like if you tried to give birth through your anus, and if you were a man, it'd be like if you tried to give birth through your anus. <laughs> It was horrible. <laughs> so I went to the hospital. My whole leg was like, you're vomiting. I mean, it's disgusting. It's really unattractive. I can go into it. But it's like you're giving birth to Roy G. Biv colors from every word. <laughs> went into the hospital, and they looked at me, and they're like, we got to give you Percocet. <laughs> and I never uh, take drugs. And the reason is, in uh, college, it was suggested that I have ADHD. What's that? And um, <laughs> they gave me Adderall and said, be careful about the manic tendencies. <laughs> Fast forward two hours later, and I probably should preface this with, I went to Wesleyan. Yeah! Fast forward two hours later, I was planning the second Pan-African conference, which hadn't happened since the 1890s. <laughs> Oprah nor Cornell West, by the way, made the grade for what I had selected. The next time I tried drugs, um, luckily they didn't need to eat my advice, and you've seen they've done very well since, so it's, it's fine. To, to empathize too much with them, it's okay, they'll make it. Um, it was only because they were already so big, and I didn't feel that they really you know, care about Africa in the way they needed to. But anyways, <laughs> the second time, was at a uh, UCB new party on New Year's and this guy was having a bake sale and I thought that was really rude that you're at a party with your friends and I yelled at him about this and he gave me some of the cookies and <laughs> I spent the entire New Year's walking around New York trying to broker peace between Jimmy Carter and Henry Kissinger and at the time I was living in the studio with a friend so I had to stay in the bathroom. <laughs> also, I'm not kidding, until I cut it out. <laughs> Horrible. So I really have not done uh, what's called drugs, alcohol, or also known as normal behavior, which is why most people probably aren't lonely. So I tried to explain this, but the woman just said, no one's ever refused us. So I thought, who am I? <laughs> I took the Percocet, and it, I don't know if anyone, if you have never had this, I cannot articulate how incredible <laughs> and how amazing this is. I mean, Percocet is just a beautiful gift. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most wonderful thing. I, like, talk about, I didn't feel lonely. I felt like I belonged. <laughs> I just felt so comfortable and happy. Happy. I mean, like, really, you know, that unadulterated, you know how rare it is to, like, really laugh now. As well. I just was so happy. And the nurse came over, and the nurse looked exactly like, I mean, I felt like, I, the nurse looked like Lenny Kravitz, all right? I, 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 I felt, like, precious. And I don't, I don't need to say, I want to preface this. I, I did not feel like an at-risk single adolescent mother who was going to find out that I had HIV, who had a child with Down syndrome, and who was about to have another child who was going to contract a maternal child health HIV due to the fact that poverty leads to a culture of poverty and not the opposite. I didn't struggle with these systemic issues due to social stratification. But I did have the hottest fucking nurse. And it just felt so nice. And then he started asking me questions. <sighs> It was so nice to be courted. <laughs> so, I don't want to show off, but first he's like, do you have a history of eating disorders? I just felt so flattered. I don't have to discipline.
one for that, but... <laughs> Then he's like, what's your sexual history? And I was like, okay, I get it. <laughs> it's all history. Not a lot, but just, you know, it's my first time here with you. And um, asked me about my period. I thought that was really, like, kind of a low point, but I'm like, does it really matter, you know? Um, and things were going great, and I thought about asking him questions too. <laughs> but then I remembered what I had learned from Cornell West and Oprah Winfrey. And that was to let him let you be you. <laughs> That's how Oprah, me and my partner was, and taught me was to seize the moment. Preferably in a rap song, but I didn't do that. Um, it was amazing. And things were going great until the doctor came in. And I know that you're supposed to like date a lot of different people and I tend to get like tunnel vision and you're just supposed to be open. And another part of it was like, here I am, this like Jewish kid who's totally rich as to rise, all right, middle class to lower class, but whatever. But it was just that weird defining moment of like, I'm a gatherer, I bring poverty to the relationship. That's my gift. Shouldn't I at least look at the alpha male, the hunter? You know? Or should you be with the one who's more similar to you and you can relate? I also let him know the Lenny, we'll just call him Lenny, my nurse. Um, I didn't want him to worry because I was Jewish that I wouldn't be interested. <laughs> and I didn't want him to worry because he's a nurse and that's typically more common for women. I didn't want him to worry about these things. <laughs> I let him know I was open to Christianity, so I explained to him <laughs> how weird I thought that sometimes religious people, sometimes religious people are homophobic and they make generalizations. You see, this is all the good cues. You know, he had given me cues he was interested in here. I was <laughs> letting him know suddenly. And I told him I thought it was crazy. People thought, well, they don't think Jesus is dead, Joseph is gay, because he's into shoes. Because that's a correlation. <laughs> He's a goblin. The fact that he didn't want to acknowledge having sex with a woman? That means he's probably gay, that's a <laughs> And so I wanted him to know. And I couldn't tell if the analogy worked or not because he decided to go and let the doctor do the breast exam. <laughs> now, I came in for a burn leg. <laughs> But I'm also a 35-year-old single female. So I weighed those issues. And I got the breast exam. And I must have felt guilty or something after, because when he left, like, Lenny came back. <sighs> Sorry, I stopped clock myself. And he wanted me to pee in a cup. Now, I'm not naive. I don't do drugs. I haven't done a lot of these things. I'm a weird, nerdy, strange kid who's in a grown-up body, but I, I'm in comedy. Like, I hang out with a comic. When we don't play Scrabble, he gets peed on by prostitutes. His emails yellow treats. You can check him out. I'm not kidding. <laughs> so I, like, I wasn't naive about this. So I went and did it. Peed in the cup. I cleaned it up really nicely. <laughs> I wanted to like, you know how like when you go to the overpriced coffee stores and they put like a heart or a leaf out of you know, like a stone on top to justify why you're paying five dollars? How can I make mine stand out? Put a bow around it. And uh, I drop it off. And again, I'm not naive. But it's not that it was like the first time he was gonna get this. But I looked around and there were all these other cups. It's not, my, it's not even his first that day. And then he's like, we'll call you if anything's wrong. Do not call me to break up with me. Do not do, do it here if you need to. And just hands me this piece of paper. And this is how all the relationship seems to go. He hands me this paper and wants me to cope it. We are not going Dutch. This was not. <laughs> 
Maya's actual fantasy. This is not how it would have worked. You would have been the hunter. <laughs> and I started to realize as I left, like, one great thing about Percocet is that when it's working, it's phenomenal, but when you come off it, you're back to your real life. So my suggestion to everyone when you ask the question of how do you deal with loneliness, you should have a good imagination and a shitload of Percocet. 